What's up, all you beautiful people out there? So, I've been busy. Now, what I've been learning? Well, I've been learning React. And I built this. I didn't build it. Um, someone actually already built this desktop. It's a Windows 11 themed uh, desktop in React uh, in a browser. So I kind of just repurposed it and just kind of threw on my icons and threw some links. That way, it's just a helpful way to see the links I saved, the links I'm interested in, the links that are worth my time to put here because it's going to help you you know, play with our technologies, learn about our solution. It might actually uh, have some resources that you don't actually have to go and build yourself. It might be already there, okay? So I'm gonna just sh quickly go over these icons and share with you what I've been working on. In the future, I plan on trying to figure out if I could do some training or something like that through this interface. So yeah, just check with this and uh, just stay up to date on the links, um, the GitHub repos, and maybe even blog posts I'm gonna put here, okay? All right, so the first one is, of course, uh, please subscribe um, if you wanna be updated on any future videos. And my links. So you can actually take my, uh, click on here and actually visit all the nice links I have, okay? I kind of saved. And then from here, you can click on it and you're gonna need the authorization or, or license to, to actually access the product, but it's, a just, it's just a quick hit list of all the links I kind of share to customers. And I just saved it here for you guys. Also, GitHub links. So any GitHub repos that I think are interesting, I'm just gonna put here. So if you ever wanna check the GitHub links I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, feel free to you know, check this uh, repository out, okay? Azure Resource Explorer. If you need to explore your Azure resources, this is a good way to explore it to teach you how to query the Azure Resource Explorer API. So this is connected kind of through the API where you kind of put a get, put, post, delete, and you can follow the documentation. You can Ansible code it. You can you know log into your providers, but this is actually using your whatever you know session you have cached so it's just it's just really a, just a new tab into that area okay the adx kq explorer adx stands for azure data explorer this is a little playground for you to query our data set and just learn kql okay if you've seen my other videos these are going to be helpful for you to to review because I plan on putting some queries here and try to make it easier for you to learn KQL, okay? So stay tuned on there. Log Analytics KQL Playground. So Azure Data Explorer is one sort of database or service that you can query using the KQL language, but you can also query Sentinel, right? Or Log Analytics. And so this is just a simple query and there's all these data sets so you can try to pop open and query yourself and practice your KQL. Maybe you wanna take this set and then you wanna just um, only grab the display name, right? Hold shift, press enter. And now you have the display names. Then you can summarize by display name to see what the summary is. And maybe you wanna do a count, right? So this is just a way to practice KQL. Okay, guys, the Azure Sentinel GitHub. So when you click on here, it actually opens up VS Code and opens up the re repo within VS Code. So you can just browse the GitHub repo within VS Code, VS Code in a browser, okay? And how am I achieving that? Well, I'm gonna tell you real quick. So it, there's a, a gentleman that basically built that GitHub repo, and you just really just put the uh, the path of your, you know, the the author, and then the repository, and then GitHub One S will just direct you there. And it looks fine. I mean, um, uh, I suggest you vet it yourself. But um, I looked at it, and it looks it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, the code's public, so it's up to you if you want to, you know, browse repo and you want to authenticate. You actually don't have to authenticate, so you could just browse a repo without authenticating. Um, but I think there's like a limit 
of how much you can browse around before it triggers uh, the API. And the API has like a throttle. So logging in gives you more ability to uh, browse the repo. Okay, let me close this window. And the and the same thing for the Azure, um, for the Defender GitHub repo, it takes you to the Defender repo through the VS Code browser as well, okay? The Defender test ground, if you ever wanna test out our AV, be sure to come to the Defender test ground and uh, you're gonna be able to, you know, evaluate the attack surface reduction, take these, uh, actually take the code and copy this. These are PowerShell commands that you can kind of build your script to test certain features and turn on and disable certain services and test our Defender uh, AV product, okay? So all this is something you can test with and you can click on resources and get more documentation around there, okay? And around the testing. The MS Graph API Explorer. If you need to query the Graph API, I suggest you sign into the Graph Explorer, right? And after you sign in, then you can query the Graph API. Simple as that. And if you want to do a special query, you just go scroll to the list here and see if there's already one pre-made that you can kind of use. This is um, teaching you, you know, how to actually make those API requests. So a git, put post, and I'll actually do a, a more thorough video to actually show you actually how to use the Graph Explorer. Okay, guys? The terminal. Terminal is just something that's, it's fake. It's uh, there's really nothing. You put help. There are some commands you can put, but uh, it's just a fake terminal. So, you know, it's this is not a VM. So it's just a terminal interface that kind of presents, uh, responds back with the commands based off the input you provide. Okay, so you, yeah, pretty much it. The uh, let's see what else we have here. The adaptive card designer. So this is what I actually use to make my Teams card. If you've seen my other GitHub repos of when I posted with Team Card integration or with ServiceNow, this is actually how I build my Teams card. So I actually drop this down. I'll go to Microsoft Teams dark mode. It makes sure the target version is the right version. And then you just go about modifying the payload editor, which is the template, and then the data. So if you change this out, to new title, it updates the preview screen, right? So you can kind of use this to build your nice little Teams card with buttons and everything, okay? The Azure Cloud Shell. If you guys don't know, this really, it's really awesome. Uh, it allows you to have uh, PowerShell connectivity through Azure. So you actually use Azure, you actually have to have a subscription, but it allows you to query your Azure resources through PowerShell through the CLI interface without actually having to install any packages or anything. So if you want that kind of setup and connectivity, you kind of use this. Jupyter Notebooks. So I've been on and off building on Jupyter Notebooks. Um, there hasn't been really much interest in it, but the premise is I wanted a way to kind of set up some workbooks, some worksheets and, you know, be able to run Python, PowerShell. I was thinking about trying to incorporate Rust as well. I remember there was a Rust one and there's some error screens. So probably there's some dependencies that's not working, but it still does work. So there's Python you can code in. You can also put code in PowerShell if you like PowerShell. So you can do like um, name equals Bob, right? And then we can do uh, write host uh, name. Like that. See, simple as that. So uh, it's Jupyter Notebooks with a little bit of PowerShell and uh, you know something that you might want to be interested in as well. And I did not, I'll, I'm going to fix those dependency issues, but I'll just fix them when I have time, okay? But yeah, easy way to spin up Jupyter Notebooks and it uses my binder. So you can definitely use my binder to spin up that Jupyter Notebooks environment without actually having a you know, have your own Jupyter Notebooks web server or spin it up locally. You can actually use my binders if you have the configuration files right. CyberChef is a tool I always like to use. It helps me take certain uh, text, convert it to base64 or whatever. And it's, it's just a lot of little translation tools and a lot of, and sort of the premise is the recipe is what you do. The input is what you provide. So if we take test data, and we want to turn it to base64, that's our output. We can turn it to base64 double times, 
and that's a new output. It takes a base64 and then base64 again. So it's uh, if you're into cryptology or you know um, you're probably familiar with this, but if you're not, you want to learn about how data gets converted to one to another, you can kind of use this to kind of build out those recipes. And it actually has an API you can feed data to and, and get a response back. So it's a very powerful tool. And you can actually download this or go to their GitHub and build a, your own web server environment. But I'm just directing to his uh, GitHub repo. And that's it. That's the desktop. Um, Feel free to you know visit whenever uh, you want to check out my you know, any new links I have. Um, again, the GitHub links are it's going to be good. I'm going to try to update as much as I can with interesting repositories I like. And uh, again, my links are just portal links or links that I find interesting. Okay, and I plan on expanding it later. But feel free to add some comments and let me know what else you might think that I could add to this interface. Um, hopefully, this will be a pretty good vehicle to kind of uh, complement my YouTube videos, okay? All right, thank you for watching this quick video. Um, enjoy uh, playing around in the various tools I have here. And feel free to like and subscribe if you like the content and uh, stay safe. Have a good day.